Hello, everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss why do we hold cash, reasons for holding cash. Cash is king. Cash is the oxygen for any company. Now, at the same time, holding too much cash is not a good idea, and we're going to find out why. So in this session, we're going to look at the reasons why do we hold cash. Yes, we need cash. That's obvious. But we need to know specifically why. And also, we need to know how to manage the collection of cash. What are some techniques? What are some tools that company utilizes to manage their cash flow? In the next few sessions, we will look also at cash management in details. But in this session, it's basically an introduction. Remember, cash is king. You want to make sure you have the cash when needed, not too much cash on hand, and you don't want to be short in cash. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's start by stating that cash is the safest asset. What does that mean? It means if you have cash in the bank account, there is no risk except inflation. Of course, if we have inflation, your cash might lose value. Otherwise, cash is safe in the bank. That's great. That's the good news. The bad news is because it's safe and you're not taking any risk, it's going to create the lowest return. Well, this means if you really want to live in a perfect world, what you should do is you should have the same amount ca cash that's coming in equal to the same amount of cash go leaving you. So cash in should equal cash out. This is called perfectly synchronized. This is ideally, but that's not really possible. And you really don't want that. You want some extra cash on hand. Now, we're going to find out why do you need that extra cash on hand. We're going to give some reasons because if you keep extra cash on hand, there is, you, you're going to earn a low, lower return. But at the same time, if you have extra cash on hand and an opportunity comes up, you might, you might be able to take advantage of it. So some of the reasons you want to have cash on hand is speculative motive. What does that mean? It means being able to take advantage of bargain, bargain purchases that might arise. So suddenly, oftentimes, the market in which you are operating in goes down. Whether that's the real estate market, the stock market, foreign currency market, whatever you are trying to buy, the market goes down. Well, you have cash on hand. You can take advantage of this downturn and buy with it assets. You could also earn interest. If suddenly interest rate went up and you have cash in the bank account, guess what? Your money will earn more return because interest rate went up. Also, you might have a favorable exchange rate fluctuation. Let's assume you have an account payable that's due in 30 days. And suddenly, and this account payable is in euros, just for the sake of illustration. Suddenly, the euro prices went down. What you would do, you will take this cash and buy the euros and lock your lock your price at this low rate. So basically, the same as being able to take advantage of bargain purchases. This is one of the reasons. Another reason you want to keep extra cash on hand is precautionary motive. What does that mean? It means you have to be careful. You have to, keep, you have, to have some cushion, some protection in case of a downturn. So you, you're going to need some safety, safety supply, safety, enough cash in case the company goes through a rough patch or in case the economy goes, goes through, rough, through some rough patches. You need that extra cash. Also, transaction motive. What's a transaction motive? You need to keep paying your bills on a regular basis. Pay your employees, pay wages, pay your accounts payable, pay your taxes in case you have a dividend obligation. Also, in some circumstances, you need to keep cash on hand as a mandatory, and this is called compensating balances. What are compensating balances? Compensating balances are balances you need to keep at the bank. It's not an option. It's not like, well, I'm, I, I choose to keep this money. That's not the case. Cash balances are kept at a commercial bank. What purpose to compensate banking services the firm receives? 
Let's assume you took a loan, a $100 million loan from a bank. What they would do, they would say, we want you to keep $2 million at all time at the bank. We don't want you to take the full amount out. Well, if you keep that $2 million, there's an opportunity cost. It means you can use this $2 million somewhere else, but it's locked up. And this is another reason why you hold cash. It's not because you want to hold cash. It's mandatory. Now, if that's the case, if this situation exists, from an accounting perspective, you have to disclose it. You have to disclose this in the notes of the financial statement. So keep in mind, there's always a trade-off between the cost of keeping the cash and liquidity. Liquidity means you always have cash ready for whatever reason. It means you are being liquid. That's great. You want to be liquid. But being liquid comes at a cost because being liquid means keeping money at the bank. And when you keep money at the bank, it gives you the lowest return. You might be missing opportunity, opportunity cost, investing somewhere else, or on the positive side, keeping this money, you might be able to take an advantage of a sudden drop in prices. Now, when it comes to cash, where do companies generate cash from? Usually from an accounting perspective, if you remember the accounting equation, assets equal to liabilities plus equity. So you could get cash from two different places, from the owners themselves, or you can get cash through that. So you either get cash through that or stocks. This is how the company initially raise cash. Then eventually the company will operate. And when they operate, what do they do? They make sales. That's what every company do. They make sales, either sales of services, sales of goods. They provide a value to a customer and that customer either pay them immediately or pay them later. So it's very important for the company to manage receivable because receivable is a source of cash. Usually it's the main source after that and equity. Because every time you make a sale on credit, your debit account receivable, your account receivable goes up and your sales goes up. Then eventually the customer pays you, you debit cash and your credit account receivable. Your cash goes up, your account receivable goes down and simply put what, what you end up with is a sale and cash. So what you want to do is manage the account receivable properly because it's a huge source. It's the main source of cash for a company because it's your sales. So what are the main factors in managing cash? First, you have to have a credit policy. The main factor in managing your cash is your credit policy. What's a credit policy? Who are you selling to? Are you selling to credit worthy customers? Are you selling to customers who have a 600 FICO score? FICO score is the credit score or 800. Now, if you're managing, if you're selling to customers who has on average an 800 score, of a FICA score, this means you are selling to credit worthy customers. And if you are selling to credit worthy customers, there's a good chance those customers will do what? They will pay you. And because they pay you, you collect your cash. Also, what influenced your cash collection is the credit period and the discount offered. The credit period is how long are you giving the customer to pay? Are you giving them 30 days? Are you giving them 45 days? Are you giving them 90 days? This is gonna influence your source of cash. And the discount, are you offering a discount? A discount is a way to receive your cash early. You offer a higher discount, for example, two slash 10, it means you are giving them 2% of the pay in 10 days. Maybe if you go to 3%, three slash 10, they might pay earlier. And N30 means you have 30 days to pay. If you give them 60 days, they're gonna take longer to pay. So you have to balance between how long you are giving them to pay and what's the credit amount you are giving them uh, in case they pay early. Also, your collection effort. Do you have a dedicated department? In other words, do you have people in your company that are dedicated for collecting the money? In other words, calling people, following up on account receivable. If you do have something like this, well, your cash collection should go up or you can outsource this process. It means get a third company that will specialize in collection. Now, the company needs to know how well they are managing the receivable. How do they keep track of this? Well, one way to do it is to keep track of account receivable turnover. How do you compute account receivable turnover? It's taking your sales, dividing your sales by your average receivable. You want to measure on a regular basis how well you are managing your receivable. What does that mean? Let, well, let's take a look at an example. Let's assume a company with 1.2 million in sales and average receivable of 100K. It means their account receivable is 12 times. What does it mean, their account receivable 12 times? It means this company, they sell and they collect their money 12 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10 11 12 times a year now do you want this to be do you want this number to be higher or lower you want it to be higher you want to have your turnover higher how can you make your turnover higher two ways you can increase actually three ways you can increase your sales keep your receivable constant you can keep your sales constant reduce your account receivable or do both at the same time. So let's assume the company was able to reduce their account receivable to 50,000 and keep their sales at 1.2 million. Their turnover will be 24 times, not 12 times, which is higher. Now, another way to compute uh, the measure, this receivable management is to compute something called day sales and account receivable, which is computed by taking either 365 or 360. So in your textbook, they might, you know, they might accept 365 divided by the turnover or in some textbook, they take 360 divided by the turnover rather than 365 they want you to use 360 so be careful whether it's in your book your homework on the CPA exam they will tell you which formula to use but simply put 360 or 365 I'm sure you all know it's the number of days in a year it's 365 and some textbook they use 360 don't worry about why just it's the banking calendar just know this but if you take 360 divided by 12 this tells you how many days it's taking the company to collect their cash now, bear in mind, there's more than one variation to compute this, just FYI, so you are aware of it. Now, let's look at some techniques to improve this ratio, to improve day sales collected. So you want to collect your money earlier, because remember, this is your, basically your health, your health status. You're measuring this amount. You want to reduce this amount. How, what can you do? Well, one thing you can do is reduce what we call the flow time. What is the flow time or the mailing time? Well, let's assume a customer sends you a check day zero. Well, it may take in the mail five days until that check is received or it may take less. It may take more, but let's assume four days. Then once you receive it, it's going to take you another day to deposit this money. Then from the time you deposit the money until the time the money is available, it may take two or three days, depending on your banks in which federal district it is, how, uh, how fast they process the checks. So what you want to do is you want to reduce what's called the mail float. You want to receive the money earlier. The earlier the ha you have the money, the better off you are. Now, bear in mind, mailing checks in the U.S. becoming less and less relevant. Why? Because people are paying online through their phone, through the internet, through their banking, e-banking. So it's, this problem is becoming less and less relevant. But what you want to do, one thing to do is to send all the checks to one location. Why? Because now you can mass produce them, have one department, and they can be proficient. Or you want to have different mail collection points to, re to reduce mailing times. If you know you have a lot of customers on the West Coast in LA, you want to have a collection point there. If you know you have a lot of customers in Florida, you want to you wanna have a collection point there. If you have many customers in Pennsylvania, you want to have a collection point there. Why? To reduce the mail time. So when customers send their check, sends their check in Pennsylvania, it's received the following day. You may want to hire an outside company to specialize in cash collection. That's another also a good idea if you don't want to or you don't have the resources to do that. Also, you can create a logbox system and we're going to talk about the logbox checks inside the bank where the customer sends you the check right to the bank account and the bank, not the bank account, to the bank, and the bank will open that mail and deposit the check. And we'll talk about the lockbox system because you have to decide whether it's worth it or not because there's a fee for that. So the bank will deposit the checks directly into the firm's account. Now, why is this a good idea? Because if the check, if the money goes directly to the bank, your employees don't see it, which is good. This is part of your internal control because some of the employees might have access to the record. And you don't want people who have access to the record also to have access to the money. So sending the money directly to the bank is an excellent internal control. Also, obviously, the best way is to ask your customers to pay via phone or via Internet. This way you don't have to worry about worrying about, you know, checks, lost, stolen or whatever. Now, cash concentration moving cash from multiple banks into the firm's main account you want to have that money immediately available if you have one bank account it's better to have a cash concentration this way you could earn higher interest and use it more efficiently another way to improve 
collection is something called factoring and we'll talk about factoring in a separate recording but what is factoring factoring is when you have a receivable let's assume a million dollar and you expect to receive this money within the next 30 days you don't want to wait 30 days because you need the money now so what you will do you will factor factor means sell you would sell this receivable to a factoring company for nine hundred and ninety thousand so they pay you nine hundred and ninety thousand and they will collect a million dollar by doing so you would receive your money earlier let's take a look at this example to determine whether it's worth it to have a lockbox system so other manufacturing is investigating a lockbox system the purpose is to reduce the collection time you want to get this money as early as possible and this is what they have in terms of data to make a decision the average number of payments per day so they receive approximately 420 checks the average value per payment is a little bit less than a thousand the bank will charge them 30 cent per check to process once the money in the bank account it earns daily 0.07 percent if they if they choose the lockbox system they can get their money four days earlier in the bank account is it worth it let's do let's perform the computation we receive 420 checks on average nine hundred and ninety dollars and we would receive this money four days earlier in other words we will have one million six hundred sixty three thousand two hundred dollars this money would earn daily 0 0.007 this is the return the benefit then we have a cost of 30 cent per one check therefore the benefit is one thousand one hundred sixty four dollars and twenty four cent the cost is one twenty six benefit minus the cost we will have a benefit of thousand thirty eight dollars and twenty four cent i would say yes we will go with this log box system what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional mcqs additional resources whether you are an accounting student finance student cpa candidate cma candidate invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe